Namaste. In this session, we will look at the F1 scores and its shortcomings. Now, we will be working with the same churn modeling data set and where the positive indicates that the customer left the bank and negative indicates that the customer did not leave the bank. For these four threshold values, I have these four confusion matrices and I can calculate the precision and recall for each of these confusion matrices, right? And now the problem arises that which threshold is the best one? For example, if we look at this first one, I have 0 0.55, 0 0.65 and 0 0.79, 0 0.55. So which of these combinations is the best working for us? Well, we cannot answer that intuitively. For that, we would need a single metric measure that captures this information. And one such measure is the F1 score. It will combine the results of precision and recall into a single metric by taking the harmonic mean. So the F1 score formula looks something like this. It is since it is harmonic mean, it is 1 divided by precision and 1 divided by recall in the denominator. And in the numerator, it is the number of terms in the denominator. So we have 2 here. So 2 upon these two quantities. And after simplifying, it becomes twice into precision recall upon precision plus recall. So in our case, it happens to be 0 0.57 for the default setting of 50%. Now the minimum value and maximum value, the maximum can be 1 of course, because if we input precision is equal to 1 and recall is equal to 1, that is, if we have no false positives and no false negatives, we would have precision and recall equal to 1. So our F1 score will be 1. And as for the minimum case, well, just think about it. If we have 0 precision, then we would have 1 upon 0 in the denominator here. Then this would become undefined. And hence, just imagine we have a very small precision value. Then this number will be a very huge number. 1 upon very small number is a big number. And again, if we have a very small recall value, then again, we would have a very big number here and big number plus big number will be a very big number and 2 divided by a very big number will be a very small number and hence the minimum can be approximated towards 0. Now, there are a few issues with the implementation of F score or F1 score. Now, this F1 score is just one of the family members of this bigger F measure family. Now, first issue is that the F1 score gives equal importance to precision and recall. If we look at the formula, we notice that it is giving equal importance to both precision and recall, which is a source of some criticism because in different real life scenarios, the cost of false positives and false negatives are different. And we cannot equate false positives to be equal to false negatives. For example, it is worse to classify a sick person as healthy, which is a false negative case, than classify a healthy person as sick, which is a false positive case, right? Because if you classify a sick person as healthy, then they would not get any further treatment done or they wouldn't take any further medications and that would be bad for their health. So that is a very bad scenario and that is a very bad classifier. And if you look at the formula, false negatives is with the recall and hence if we have a very high number of false negatives and that would mean we have a very low recall and having a low recall would straight away tell us that that the classifier is not doing a good job the second issue is that f measures in general are asymmetric now this first issue was only with the f1 score because we will rectify this issue of equal importance in the f beta measures the second issue is the is with the whole family of F measures. So what I mean by that is, if we invert the positive and negative class labels, then the results will be different. This can be a problematic issue while trying to predict apples and oranges because either of them can be the positive class, right? You cannot say apples are positive and oranges are negative always. You can also say oranges are positive and apples are negative. So when you try for both of these scenarios, you will get different F1 scores and hence it would be difficult to interpret the results correctly. The third is that F measures, the family of F measures do not take into account the true negatives. So if you look at the formula for precision and recall, precision has true positive and false positive and recall has true positive and false negative. So neither of these two take into account the number of true negatives, right? And since precision and recall, they form the building blocks for the F1 score, even F1 score doesn't take into account the true negatives and this can be a problem. Because imagine we have 100 people and 80 of them are sick and 20 are healthy. Now if you predict every single one of them to be sick, then we would definitely capture all the sick people correctly. Because since we are predicting everyone to be sick, the, all the 80 people will be correctly classified. And if you look at the precision and recall formula, we will get a precision of 0.8 and recall of 1. And if you look at the F1 score as well, that would be very close to 90%. Which on paper sounds excellent, 
but if you dig deeper into the confusion matrix you would notice that the number of true negatives is zero because you are not classifying any healthy person as healthy so if you classify all the 20 healthy people as sick then if the second stage is that they have to go through uh, physical pain or they have to take some heavy dose medications then that would be a very bad thing right hence f measures are not a good uh, metric when you want to also take into account the number of true negatives and all, and you just do not want to concentrate only on the number of the positive cases i hope now you have a clear understanding of when to use the f score and when not to use it so thank you for watching